Well, here for more on those figures from the tax collector is acting SARS Commissioner Mark King. And Mark, thanks so much for your time you. uh, today. So you collected more than um, last year, but less than what had been targeted. Yes. Are you happy or are you concerned about that? I wouldn't say I'm concerned, I'm unhappy yeah. uh, in a way, okay. um, but obviously we're gratified for the effort of our staff in, in, in getting to where we did get. Um, yes, I think it's a mixed feeling, <laughs> uh, but obviously I would love to have made target and in order to, to give the, the, the fiscus the ability to expend more money on, on the desperate needs that we have in our society. What do you blame the undershooting on? Well, there's a number of areas, obviously. Uh, if we have a look at, for instance, uh, VAT has been, it's down in terms of the average. If we look, at, it's, it's a couple of percentage points down. Uh, the dividends tax is one of the areas uh, compared to the previous year where we saw us overshooting on dividends tax, where people yeah. were foreshadowing in terms of, of what the increase in, in dividends tax. Yeah. So those are some of the areas. Pay as you earn continues to be quite robust and obviously our biggest contributor. Yeah. Uh, but there are other areas where, where we are concerned a little bit, uh, but we, we need to look at those and, and see how we, we go forward from here. What are those areas? Well, I think some of the areas that we do need to focus on, and, and it was mentioned today, is the whole tax morality and tax compliance. Yeah. And specifically, we, we are seeing a constant uh, decline in compliance of the filing of tax returns, yes. specifically VAT and pay-as-you-earn. These are important taxes because it's money being withheld by employers or vendors, yeah. and already they have the money, and then they're utilizing it for something else. Now, we need to understand that better, and we need to ensure compliance of those of those tax types. What do you think that is? Is it a sign of the economic times? Is it because people just don't, or are, are less, as you say, likely to it, it is, <laughs> it is It is such a mixed bag. Yeah. So if you engage with some people in small business, you will find there are people f facing economic hardship and they're utilizing it for cash flow. There might be some people just willfully do doing it and they're just plain being criminal about it. Yeah and we need to address those ones. There are a number of people who have registered who've never employed anybody or have never had transactions where they've been registered and they just let the thing lapse as such. Yeah. So there's that type of behavior as well. Okay. Obviously our concern is the people who are trading who are willfully uh, just simply uh, not submitting returns. I understand you'll be working closely with the Department of Justice on those who aren't compliant. Those are some of the things. Obviously, yeah. we would prefer to do it administratively, and we, we're going to do it through education. Yeah. But we would obviously, if people continue to be non-compliant, and there's reason for, we will use the various other measures, which include uh, making charges uh, for to, to be investigated in terms of the justice cluster, yes. Now, in terms of your own systems, we've got the increase in, in VAT, everybody's talking about the impact that it's going to have on consumers, it's going to have on businesses, but what about SARS itself? Well, um, are there any administrative issues? There, there? are, obviously there are, but we've been uh, fully on, on the ball in terms of this. Our team has been working hard uh, in order to get firstly the customs uh, systems adjusted, because that had to come in at midnight on the 1st. Uh, between the 31st and the 1st, yeah. and they were ready. Our first transaction at 5.21 a.m., okay. where we collected the higher VAT rate. Uh, and obviously the VAT forms are being adjusted, and those have to be in place for the end of May. Uh, when the increased VAT. Obviously, we've been communicating as well with VAT vendors yeah. to ensure they are applying the rules correctly. Going forward then, uh, you talked about the issue of tax morality being um, a concern. What, how do you plan to address that um, so that we get back to SARS actually overshooting targets? We would love that. And we would love that. And, <laughs> yeah. and obviously it's an estimate and yeah. overshooting or undershooting is always a dicey one. But there are things that we do need to do better. Obviously, uh, we, we, we premise ourselves on serving people. Educating people is, is our primary aim. We want people to be voluntarily compliant. Yeah. So we need to do that better. We need to educate more. We've got excellent teams already doing that, but we need to use them more effectively and efficiently to ensure we're getting to people that they know their obligations. But secondly, then, if people are not doing that, we need to look at other things that we are doing, yeah. and that includes obviously using the things. But one of the areas that, or some of the areas we want to focus on in the coming year is looking at our model of serving clients and whether it be the tax practitioner community, yeah. how, do we, how do we use them better yeah. and more effectively to ensure they are fulfilling their responsibility? Looking at large business, how do we serve them better? We've had two years of the new operating model. Yeah. Is it effective the way we have it? Should we come to a better model? And those are the questions that we are asking ourselves. All right.